You and your wisdom sent the rattlesnake to bite Sam. He's never been inside the church, and it's doubtful he's ever prayed or acknowledged your existence. This may lead to his genuine repentance. And now, Lord, will you send another rattlesnake to bite Jim and another to bite John and a really big one to bite the old man? We tried to reach them for years, and it seems that what our combined efforts could not do, this rattlesnake has done in two days. It appears the only thing that would do this family any good is rattlesnakes. So, Lord, send us bigger and better rattlesnakes. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Ah. Uh, I don't know what to say after that. Amen. <laughs> Have mercy. Amen. Uh, Acts 27. Acts 27. And we won't read all of it, but just so we can get the context, um, I'll be giving you the verses that we'll, we'll be reading. Acts 27. The Bible says, when it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some of the other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius. Verse number two says, we boarded a ship from Adramatium and we put out to sea. Drop down to verse number nine, if you would. It says, Paul warned them at Crete. And then verse number 10 says, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to the ship and cargo and to our own lives also. And then let's drop down to verse number 14. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. Verse number 15 says, the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven alone. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, the storm continued raging. We finally gave up all hope of being saved. Paul stood up before them and said, men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Verse number 26 says, Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island on the, on the 14th night. Amen. Amen. About midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. And then verse number 29 says, fearing that he would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern. Now, if you um, write in your Bible, underline, where it says they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. And then let's just drop down. We just got three more verses. Verse number 39. When daylight came, verse 41 says, the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. And then verse number 43 says, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. 
Verse number 44 says, in this way, everyone reached land safely. Mm -hmm. Now, I just gave y'all <laughs> all the chapter number 27 in five minutes. Uh, I just wanted to do that because, as we know, Brother Beasley, he was to deal with chapter number 27 on today. Um, but from what I read, I want to talk to you for a few moments from the topic, uh, relying on he that is reliable, relying on he that is reliable. When we look at our text on this morning, we discover where Paul is now on his journey, that the Lord said that he will uh, face trial before Caesar. We find where God is providentially keeping Paul in spite of all his trials and tribulations, in spite of all his obstacles that seem to face his way. We also see on this journey, Paul is now on this journey. He's on a ship and he's under the custody of a centurion by the name of Julius. And not only is he a prisoner, but the Bible says there are 276 other souls on this ship. And the Bible says, nonetheless, while they are voyaging on their way to Rome, to Italy, as the Bible describes it, the Bible says that they face a storm. And this is primarily what I want to deal with on this morning because I think all of us can identify with storms. Mm -hmm. We all face storms. Some are physical, such as hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and floods. Other storms are personal, such as death in the family, job problems, marital difficulties, child raising headaches, and et cetera, and et cetera. We all face storms. Storms are a part of life. The question is not if they will come, rather a storm will come. That's not the question. The question is when will they come? The question is how will I respond to the storms when they come? Paul found himself in a life-threatening storm. For 14 days, the ship was in a raging sea. When the crew panicked, Paul stood and shared the anchors that held his life secure. That night, they, they cast out four anchors, and, and, and they wished for the day, as the Bible describes it. Those four anchors kept them through the storm until daybreak. Mm -hmm. And I want to suggest on this morning that we are to have four spiritual storms. Or, or rather, four spiritual anchors in our times of storms. Right. We should have four spiritual anchors that shall keep us in spite of the storms that we face. Amen. The first anchor that we should have when, it, when we experience a storm, our first anchor should be our relationship with God. Amen. We should be able to have a knowledge and, and we should be able to know that God is with us. Amen. When we look at Job, what kept Job when everything was turning against him? When he lost his family, when he lost his possessions, when he lost his health, one of the things that kept him anchored and kept him sane was the fact that he had a relationship with the almighty God. Amen. When we look at our Bible, what kept Joseph during those years of slavery, during those years of prison? What kept him? What kept him in his right mind? I, I like to say that he had an anchor in God. Amen. Amen. What kept David during the years that Saul pursued his life? What kept David when his own son pursued after his life and he said that he was going to take the kingdom from him? Amen. I, I would like to say that it was his relationship with the almighty God that kept him anchored and kept him in sanity. Amen. When we look at the writings of 2 Timothy, Paul had been arrested a second time in Rome. In the grim 
Specters of death was before him. The executioner's axe would soon fall on Paul. But the Bible says when he was writing his departing words, we see that Paul was not afraid. He said, I finished my course. He said, the time of my departure is at hand. And the reason that he can write words such as that is because he had a relationship with God. He had a spiritual anchor yes. in God. Amen. Paul, he said, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him yes. against that day. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse number 12. Yes. Job with a ringing affirmation, even though he was going through what he was going through, even though he felt like it was an injustice what he was facing, Job still was able to muster these words in Job the 13th chapter, verse number 15. He said, though he slay me, being that I got a relationship with him, yet will I trust him. See, we must come to know God personally. Yeah. See, I, I, I want to ask the question on this morning. Do you know him? Yeah. Oh, this, this might seem like a surface question, but it's a little deeper than that. See, yeah. just because you know your Bible mercy, don't mean you know him. Yeah. Just because you know church don't mean you know him. Yeah. Just because you know uh, um, the, 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 the gymnastics of worship service don't mean that you know him. Amen. See, in order for us to know him, we got to spend some time with him. Amen. We got to communicate with him. Mm -hmm. We have to humble ourselves before him. Amen. See, I, I think that this is a real question because uh, we know that people can know facts about us but still don't know us. Amen. See, the IRS knows many things about you. They know where you work. They know how many kids you have. They know your salary. They know your social security number. They know your address. They know your phone number. They know everything about you. I'm talking about the facts. Amen. But do they really know you? Jesus. See, in order for them to know you, they got to have a personal relationship with you. They can know all the facts about you, but they won't even be able to identify you if they seen you on the streets. Amen. But, but, come on, y'all. I, I want y'all to see this. Because there's a difference in knowing facts and knowing God. Jesus. See, the IRS might know all the facts about you. But then, for those who are animal lovers, Jesus. those little furry creatures, amen, they might not know all the facts about you, but they know you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. 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 They might not be able to say your name. They might not be able to say your address. But when you come to the house, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. They know they master. Amen. Amen. See, see, it's a difference in knowing facts and knowing God. Mm -hmm. The same God. Do you just know facts about him? Or have you spent time with him? It, it, it. Jesus said it this way in Matthew the seventh chapter. He said, "Many gonna come to me in that day, yes. saying, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. did we not prophesy in your name? Jesus. Did we not do many great things in your name?" And listen what Jesus said. Jesus said, "Depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never knew Jesus. All this stuff you've been doing." Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, "Depart me." I never knew you. I never had a relationship with you. I never had an intimate relationship with you. But if we're going to navigate the storms of our life, we have to have a spiritual anchor. And that has to be our anchor where we have a relationship with the almighty God. Amen. See, when we have a relationship with the almighty God, even though storms may come, we know God is in control. Yes, yes, 
We know everything is going to work out for our good and know, we, we know it's going to work out for his glory. Amen. Paul was in a terrible storm, but Jesus sustained him. Jesus said, Paul, don't worry. Your life is going to be spared. And not only your life, yes. everybody that's on board, Hell. their lives is going to be spared. Yes. That's the first anchor, a relationship with the Lord. If you're going to navigate your storm, the second anchor you need to have is an anchor in the word of God. In times of uncertainty, you can trust the word of God. When everything else is changing, the word of God doesn't change. How could Paul be at peace? Because he had the written word of God. He had the prophetic word that came from an angel when the angel said, you will stand before Caesar and none will perish. He had God's word. Paul had confidence because the word of God has already said in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse number 16, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, yes. rebuking, Amen. correcting, Amen. training in righteousness. He had God's word, so this had this allowed him to be anchored even in the time of a storm. Amen. See, we can't change God's word, but the word of God should change us. Amen. When we get the word of God in our soul, it should change us. Amen. Uh, it reminds me of a, 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 a story that I came across. And this is a preacher story. Amen. I'm, I'm, I, 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 if it's my story, I'm going to tell y'all. But this is a preacher story. <laughs> but it goes on to say that it was a man in another country. And some missionaries had dropped off some Bibles. And one of the men, he, 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 he said, I, I'm not reading that Bible. He said, but I do want one. And the missionary said, why, why, do you want, why do you want one a Bible if you ain't going to read it? And the man said, well, uh, you know how thin the papers are. They make good cigarette paper, right? Mm -hmm. So the missionaries, they decided to uh, uh, wrestle with him or make a deal with him. They said, okay, we'll give you a Bible knowing that you're going to use the Bible for cigarette papers. They said, the only thing that we want you to do is read the, the page before <laughs> you roll up tobacco in the page. And the story goes on to say the man will read the verses and the chapters and then he'll roll them up a cigarette and keep it on moving. And lo and behold, he got to the end of the Bible. And, and he had an opportunity to have a conversation with those missionaries. And he said, I, I, I want to be baptized. What hindered me from being baptized? And the missionaries, they, they jumped for joy because they understood. They said not only was he reading the Bible, but the Bible was reading him. <laughs> That's why the Bible tells us in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse number 12, that the word of God is sharp, powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, discerning between uh, um, the spirit and the soul, even the bone and the marrow. Because the word of God, amen, not only will it get in you, amen, but it will get in your spirit as well. Amen. Amen. So, in our times of storm, we have to be anchored mm -hmm. in the word. Amen. Because Jesus said, my word it's going to last. Mm -hmm. It's going to judge us mm -hmm. even in the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. The third anchor as we're going through our storms, we need to have the people of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Have mercy, Jesus. Fellow believers. Yes. Look what the Ecclesiastic writer said. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one. 
because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Amen. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strings is not quickly broken. And in, in, in times of storms, believers are to pray for each other and give whatever they can to help one another in our times of storm as well. Amen. How many of you in your times of storm have been encouraged by fellow believers? And, and some of y'all know, you know, it's the subtle things. It, it's not a big thing. It's not a, a whole lot of things. You know, sometimes we can't do nothing but pray. And, and I hate to even say that, nothing but pray, because that's the big guns right there. <laughs> amen. A amen. Sometimes that's the best thing that we can do is pray. Amen. But we need to be able to bear each other's burdens. We need to have some trusted relationships in our time of storm. Amen. And, and let me say this right here. Relationships are not made in storms. Relationships are made before storms. Relationships are tried during storms. Let me say that again. I might have I might have twisted a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Relationships are not made in the storm. Relationships are tested during the storm. See, we should be establishing relationships before our storms even arise. Storms are gonna come. But while we're having sunny days, that's the time where we should be forming bonds because when storms come, people don't like to be around trouble. Yes. Oh, God. Let me mess with y'all a little bit. See, see, it's one thing to get sick. But you know what? You better not stay sick. Jesus. People are concerned when you initially get sick. Woo! Brother Smith. I heard you was down. Yeah, I'm down. I'm looking to bounce back. Jesus. People send you letters, check on you. You stay sick? Eight weeks don't went back. You still sick? Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, relationships are not made while you're going through storms. Relationships are tried while you're going through the storm. Amen. That's why Job, he told his wife, he said, he said, shall we not accept bad things that come from God? Shall we only enjoy the benefits, the good things that come from God? When she, said, she said, Job, you should curse God and die. Job said, no, that don't sound right to me. Mm -mm. We, we can't do that. Because I already made a covenant with God that I'm going to serve him to our dad. Amen. Amen. See, uh, okay, let me let me let me help somebody. We 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 you know it's easy. Get engaged when they come, rent a tux, got on that dress you've been trying to make sure you can fit in on that day, y'all y'all know, uh, you know you get there and it's it's easy, you know, and you got to stand before the people and you take your vows and all that and. So on and so forth. Better or worse, sickness and health. Yeah, we're going to do the thing. Yeah, I love her. He loved me. We, I want I to spend the rest of my life with her. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Amen. That's great. <laughs> but when the rubber meets the road, it's during the marriage. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we got to share with our young people. Amen. Don't fantasize just about a wedding. The real work is marriage. Right. The work ain't a wedding. I know you You got it all planned. Six bridesmaids, six grooms, and, and, and I want them standing here, and my little niece, she gonna walk down, and she gonna throw flowers and all that. It's one thing to talk all that stuff about the wedding. Amen. But the true task is dealing with the marriage. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Because every day ain't going to be honeymoon. Every day ain't going to be a sunny day. Oh, I better, I better leave this alone right here. Every day, you ain't going to feel like speaking in the morning. Every day, I better leave this stuff alone, sister Gay. Amen. And every day, you ain't going to be happy about them leaving the stuff. Amen. The, the real test is can you endure the marriage? The wedding, yeah, yeah, that's good times. That, that's, that's fine. But the Bible tells us relationships are not made in the storm. Jesus. It's tested in the storm. Yes. But we should have some people that we have a bond with them in the body of Christ. Now let me pause there for a minute because I can stay here for the rest of the message. Only got to deal with one more anchor. As believers, as believers, as we grow, as the congregation go through her seasons, in any congregation, you're going to find where some people have more in common with some people than other people. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Now, this is where we cross the line at. We cross the line where we, when we begin to form cliques, Amen. when we begin to form groups and can't nobody get inside your little group. And, and, and matter, matter of fact, being that you don't form this group, uh, uh, anybody that's not a part of this group, now you don't share the love of Christ with them. That's when we get in trouble. But we understand that even Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Yes. We understand even when Jesus moved about, he took certain disciples with him. It was many disciples. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he chose Peter, James, and John to go on the Mount of Transfiguration with him. Amen. Did he love the ones who didn't go up the Mount? Yes, he loved them. Amen. Did he love those ones who wasn't with him when he fed the 5,000. Yes, he loved them all. Amen. But there were some that were in closer proximity to Jesus than others. Amen. And that's the same thing with the church. Yes. Does that mean that we can't have more in common with others than others? Jesus. We don't have more in common than others. Yes. Age. Come on, y'all. Let's just deal with age. Sis Grove, come on, let's go hang out. I want to I go, uh, let's hang out, Sis Grove. We're going, we going down to Murder Beach. Sis Grove, I ain't trying to go no more. I've been to Murder Beach a hundred times. I ain't, I ain't really trying to go down there, right? Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Now, there's going to be some people that some things she want to do, and they, they more gravitate to that. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But where we cross the line is, is when we, when we begin to form bonds and can't nobody... Get no love outside of those bonds. Mm -hmm. See, as believers, we are to love the body of Christ Amen. as a whole. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when we go through our storms, we need to have an anchor of relationships. Amen. And last but not least, when we go through our storms, we need to have an anchor of patient endurance. Amen. A famous preacher by the name of Phyllis Brooks <coughs> was in his office pacing the floor, frustrated. And somebody walked in and they saw him and they asked, they said, what's the matter, preacher? He answered, he said, I'm in a hurry and God isn't. <laughs> Y'all heard what he said? Yeah. I'm in a hurry, but God isn't. And I think we all can relate to that. Because when we're dealing with a storm, we, we, we like to think, well, God, don't you see it? Don't you see the urgency of it? God sees it, but we say the same, but I don't know if we believe it. We say it that God may not be there when he won't be, but he's always on time. But, but do we believe it? And the reason we can say that God may not show up when, he, when we want him to show up 
but he's always on time because we got to understand that he has a divine timeline. Yes. We're not, he's not on our schedule, we're on his schedule. Amen. Amen. The Bible says they were on this ship for 14 days without food. Jesus. Do, do, do you think that's urgent? No. Let some of us meet, miss breakfast. Amen. <laughs> Let some of us miss lunch or dinner. But the Bible says 14 days without food, without provisions, yes. without lights in the darkness. They had to throw things over. Not knowing the outcome. The Bible describes it that some had lost hope. Yes, yes. Yeah. They didn't know how this thing was going to turn out. Mm -hmm. All they can do is rely and trust in God. Amen. And I like what those Hebrew boys said. Amen. Even if he don't deliver me, I know he can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's his will, I know he can. Yeah. But if it ain't his will, yes. if I perish, as Esther said, let me perish in the Lord. Amen. We have to have Patient endurance. Yes. The Lord said, He that endures to the end mm -hmm. shall be saved. Amen. James said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when they are tried, they shall receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Yes. We know it's not the ones who start the race, it's the ones who finished the race yes. that gets the prize. Yes. The Revelation writer said, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, Amen. even as I also overcame mm. and sat down with the Father in his throne, Revelation 3.21. Yes. Paul later on said, I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have finished my course I have kept the faith. And on this morning, as we said, are you relying on that which is reliable? Are you relying on he that is reliable? As we go through things, Sometimes all we got to do and all we can do is just float. Trust God. Yes. Trust God. You know why? Because he's in control of the wind. He's in control of the ship. He's in control of the captain of the ship. The Bible says there was 276 people on that ship and none of them lost their life. 14 days without food. Right? But Paul said, the God that I trust, I'm relying on him. Amen. Believe me. You didn't believe me when I told you that uh, in Crete that we shouldn't sail. But being that you didn't believe me, he said, I, I, I'm telling you, uh, uh, he already told us that a storm was going to rise. But you didn't believe me. You, you, you decided to believe those who you thought were smarter than me. Okay. Amen. He said, okay, I accept that. But I'm telling you right now, God has assured me that no lives will be lost. But in order for you to sustain your life, you got to stay in the ship. Amen. And on this morning, I just want to encourage somebody on this morning to stay in the ship. Amen. Wait on the Lord, but stay in the ship. Amen. You got to stay in the ship. The Bible said, Paul said, if you get out the ship, you're going to perish. And we know the church is equated to a ship. Amen. First Peter, the third chapter, verse number 21, the Bible tells us just as in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. everyone who was saved entered into the ark. Yes. The Bible describes that everyone who is to be saved is to be baptized into the church if you're going to be saved. Our message on this morning is, are you relying on that which is reliable? Mm -hmm. 
It's not a matter of if we're going to face storms. It's a matter of when we're going to face storms. But if our soul is anchored in the Lord, we'll weather our storms. We'll come out the battle. Amen. And, and God has a way of when we come through our storms, now we got a testimony, and now we can bear some fruit. When Noah went through that storm, the Bible says, him and seven other souls entered into the ark. And with Noah relying on he that is reliable, even though the storms came, the Bible says everybody else who then rely on the Lord, then trust in his word, amen, didn't have a relationship with the Lord, the whole world perished itself as Noah and the souls that entered the ark. Amen. But guess what? Amen. Being that Noah had a testimony, God used eight souls to repeople the whole earth. Repopulate the whole earth yes. with eight souls. Yes. So that's our testimony on this morning. When we trust in God, when we believe God, yes. when we keep our faith in God, yes. God can do mighty things with one, two, three. It ain't about the number, it's about what God can do with a faithful few. Jesus said it this way. He said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, yes. you will be able to move mountains. As I close on this morning, when we go through our storms, can we sit back and rely on our relationship with Jesus Christ? Can we trust him? Can we believe that he has our best interest in mind? Or when we go through our storms, do we begin to question him as Mary and Martha did when Lazarus had died? Do we believe that he is the resurrection? Do we believe that he has all power? Amen. Do, he be do we believe that he can get us to our destination? On this morning, we're going to be standing to singing the song of encouragement. Page 10. Page number 10. 